Invisible ink. Tell anyone? Nobody. We promise. Ugh. Are you gonna open that thing or not? Huh. There's nothing there. Hmm. Is this a joke or something? Maybe she didn't feel like writing you anything. Then why would she put a note in there? Wait a second. And what if she wrote that letter with a special kind of invisible ink? Wow, I've never heard of it. If you want to keep what's written in a letter secret, you can write it with a special liquid called invisible ink or security ink. You can make invisible ink yourself by mixing lemon juice, milk, or baking soda with water. Then just dip a stick or a brush in it and write on a plain piece of paper like this. You can't see anything, right? To make the invisible ink visible again, the paper needs to be warmed up with something like an iron. But that's a secret. Well, Simka, you might be right. Only what about the iron? I can't use it. But your mom can, and right now she's doing the ironing. Yeah? Well, that changes everything. Hold on! If that really is a secret letter, then no one should be allowed to see it. Even your mother. What can I do then? Ah, I know what. Mom, can you iron my shirt too, please, will ya? What's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong, it's just that the pocket's wrinkled. Ah, sure, I'll do it. Since when did you start worrying about things like this? All done. Thanks, Mom. <sighs> that should do it. What? What is it? Huh? Tom Thomas, I really like you. <laughs> Katya. Katya is in love with you, isn't she? And what about you? Do you like her? Uh, I don't know. She does get straight A's. You like her. <laughs> you and Katya kissing in a tree. Okay, no, I... let's stop your teasing. Well, are you going to write her back? You think I should? Of course, silly. I'm scared that someone will see it. Then why don't you write it with invisible ink like she did? Yeah, go get a lemon. Nowadays, it isn't very common for people to write letters by hand and send them by regular mail. Today, people mostly send letters through the Internet. But even electronic letters should be written with some of the same simple rules of politeness used in handwritten letters. For instance, you need to write a greeting at the beginning of your letter, and a few kind words at the end are always appreciated. Something like hugs and kisses or all the best or see you soon. And before you send off your letter, it's best to read it through, to check for any mistakes. And one more thing. If you receive a message from someone, don't take too long to answer them, because they might think that you'd forgotten about them, and that can hurt their feelings. To say it simply, when you write, be polite. Go on, write. And what should I write? Come on, tell the truth. Just write this. Forgive me, Katya. Only there's another girl I really like. My one and only Simka. Mm. No, Lick. If you don't like it, then why don't you think it up? Tom Thomas, just go ahead and write how you feel deep down in your heart for Katya. Katya, I like you too. Like that? Is that all I have to write? Would that be okay? It's lovely. K-I-S-S-I. Just zip it, will ya? Tom Thomas, is that everything? And did you make sure to check that you didn't make any mistakes? No. 
But I'll check right now. Huh. All the words disappeared. Well, if there's something wrong, only Katya will find it. They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. The gramophone. And that's a photograph of my mom when she was little. She sure looked happy, didn't she? Because parents were all happy when they were children. But then they grow up and start getting all gloomy and as boring as can be. Oh, what's this, do you know? A song about a screw? It's total nonsense. Nonsense? It's about a screw, which means it's practically about fixies. Why don't we listen to it and find out? If it's good, we can all dance together. How do you listen to this thing? Like this? Why don't we try to use the player? We won't fit in there. Look, right here it says gramophone record. See? So we need to find a gramophone player. Find what? Let's go to Grandpus. Grandpus, we found a song about a screw we want to hear. <laughs> We're looking for a player for a gramophone record. Ah, I understand. What you need is a gramophone. A gramophone is an old appliance that was made for playing back sound that was recorded onto records. If you want to turn on a gramophone, you need to turn the handle to wind up its spring. The spring makes the record spin. Then a needle is placed on top of the record, and as it moves through the groove on the record, it shakes a little, which makes a diaphragm, a sort of mini drum skin, start to vibrate. The big horn of the gramophone then makes the sound louder, and we hear a voice or music. The most amazing thing is that a gramophone doesn't have an electric motor or any electronics. That's right, you don't need electricity for a gramophone to play back the sound that's recorded on a record. That's because a gramophone is an entirely mechanical wonder. If you want to know, there is a gramophone in the office of Tom Thomas's dad. It's on the desk. Great, let's go. <laughs> Thanks would be nice. I can't find the on button. There is no on button. You need to grab that handle and turn it. Now take that thing and put it down onto the record. Hmm, it's not playing. Look, there's no needle in there. And where can we get one from? We can make it. Do you have any nails around here? Is this good? That'll be great! Verda, are you ready? Totally. Better cover your eyes. Working, listen. A little screw went for a run, and now without this little part, everything just Tax falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them, with no little screws in there. The bulldozer was a strong one, until there was a thud. And then the mighty giant fell straight into the mud. music playing. It's a gramophone record. Gramophone? I thought it was broken. We fixed this old... Uh, not we. I fixed this thing. Really? 
What a wonderful boy I've got. Other kids are breaking things, and you fix them. What do you say we play that record once more? I used to love it so much when I was little. The Mighty Crane was working until there was a pop. And then the Mighty Giant gave out and lost its top. Five, four, three, two, one, a little screw went for a run. And now without this little part, everything just falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them with no little screws in there. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them with no little screws in there. Tom Thomas's mom really dances super. Yeah, she knows how to have a good time. The pen. Not here either. Tom Thomas, are you looking for me? Huh. No, for a red pen. I need it right now. What do you need it for? Here, look what my teacher wrote in my assignment book. Bad behavior during the lesson, fidgeting, and talking. What are you gonna do with the red pen? Your teacher left something out? I thought maybe, you know, I could fix it a bit. I hope I find that pen. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh. oh, wow. Good catch. So, what do you want to fix on it? I'll just add a couple of no's. And then it will say that I had no bad behavior during the lesson, no fidgeting, and no talking. See, no problem. Cool. And then add this at the end. Tom Thomas is a perfect student. Nah, then they would guess I did it. What, is it clogged up? A little scribble will do it. That's not a pen, it's more like a pen knife. Oh, look, the ball's missing. What ball? It's a pen. It's a pen, but it's a ballpoint pen. <laughs> Old-fashioned pens work by dipping the pen into a jar of ink. But with a ballpoint pen, the ink is stored inside of a tube that has a metal tip on the end with a small steel ball. Well, small for humans, that is, but of course, for fixies, it's quite large. When you drag the pen across the paper, the ball spins around and gets ink on it from inside the tube. Then it turns over and the ink rolls out onto the paper. So without the ball, a ballpoint pen won't write at all. So what am I going to do? That's my only red pen. Hi, everybody. Why do you look so sad? Uh, we lost the ball from the tip of this pen. Where? It's here somewhere. Then you're in luck, boys. In the pack of mat there's a metal detector. You can use it to find different kinds of metal objects. Nah, that's not it. I can see that myself. It's not on the table, Nolik. Until not that long ago, humans used pens that had to be dipped over and over again into an inkwell. This was quite inconvenient. And so to make writing easier, the fountain pen was invented. A fountain pen could be filled up with ink, so it could write for a much longer time. But fountain pens would often leak, leaving blots of ink on the paper. This problem was solved with the invention of the ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pens are simple, handy, and reliable, except that you can't write with them on a wall or upside down for a long time. That's because the ball uses up the ink on it, and the ink can't flow up to the tip. But even this problem has been solved. There are now special ballpoint pens that can be used by astronauts floating in space. Is this the one? You're right, that's it. Don't you just see how awesome my metal detector is? Is that what you're calling me now? Yeah! Tom Thomas, help us. Red pen. 
10 for? Well, Tom Thomas and I need to fix something in his assignment book. What? If I knew that, I wouldn't have helped you out. So no fidgeting and no talking. Hmm. And your teacher, she writes in your assignment book when you behave well? Uh-huh. Whenever we behave well, she writes a note in our books right away. Ah. Did you see, Simka, how Tom Thomas managed to outsmart everybody? Since I see nothing else here from your teacher, does that mean you behave badly the other days? Uh-huh. What? Well, uh... Did you see, Nolik, how Tom Thomas just managed to outsmart himself? They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Shh. Nolix Q. Whoop. <laughs> Tom Thomas, you'll be late for school if you don't stop. School? <laughs> don't you worry. What's he breaking this time? This time, nothing. He's solving a Rubik's Cube, Nolik. Whose cube is it? <laughs> the Rubik's Cube is the most popular puzzle game in the whole world. It was invented by Professor Rubik from Hungary. A cube has six sides on it. And on a Rubik's Cube, each of these sides has nine squares that are all the same color. You start by mixing up the colors. To solve a Rubik's Cube, you have to turn the pieces, and you keep turning and turning them until each side is one solid color again. For instance, red or yellow or light blue. Ha! That's nothing! Hey, Tom Thomas! How long have you been messing around with this cube already? It's been three whole days of turning. Three whole days? We could solve that puzzle in five minutes, now couldn't we, Simka? Oh, really? Then go right ahead. I'm off to school. Well, you ready to show Tom Thomas who's boss? <laughs> Just count me out. Hey, I thought you said Rubik's Cubes are easy to solve. I never said anything like that. This problem is all yours, Mr. Bragger. All right, I'll figure it out myself. Ugh. 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 Hey, Nolik, looks like you've got a problem. Oh, hi, Fire. Ugh. No, I'm good. Just solving this Rubik's Cube. Yeah? Can I do it with you? What? You can do it? Of course I can. How hard can it be? You'll see for yourself. Try getting all the red squares on one side. Piece of cake. Now hold it tight. Great. I'm with you. Ugh. Whoa! Like that? Class. Uh, and what about this side? What? This side's gotta be all blue. Okay, let's go fix it. There, like you wanted. Now what happened to the red side? Huh? Simka was telling me that on each side there has to be one color. Oh, like Sim could be able to do this? Simka can do it all. Well, if Simka can, then I can too. Oh! Fire! You busted the cube! I didn't bust it, I took it apart. Now let's put it together. And not just any way, but the right way. Puzzles are toys, games, or problems that force you to use your mind in a clever and creative way. Take a labyrinth, for example. In a labyrinth, the challenge is to find the one way to get through a series of tangled corridors. Another fun puzzle is a jigsaw puzzle. Here, you need to put together a picture out of many little pieces. 
for this, you need to not only pay attention, but be patient. And there are all sorts of puzzles for the computer. One popular computer puzzle is Tetris. In Tetris, different shapes fall down the screen, and you have to think quickly to get them to line up into rows. And solving puzzles isn't only a great activity for people. It's good for fixies, too. That's right. Puzzles are like exercises for our brain. There. All done. No, Lick. You better hurry, because Tom Thomas is on his way home. Hi there, Simka. Just take a look at this. We did it. I can't believe it. How? Oh, it was a piece of cake. Simka, Nolik, I'm back. Well, I'm out of here. Ciao! Woohoo! Wow! You really solved it. It was Nolik. Nolik, you are cool. So how? You see, first you break it apart into all of the pieces, and then you put it all back huh? together. No! That's cheating. You gotta turn the cube, not take it apart. Now I'll solve this cube, honestly. I don't think you can. Why are you so sure? I glued it together. Uh, how come? So you'll stop straining your brain with it. Now the cube will always be the right way. But if it doesn't turn, it's not a Rubik's Cube. Well, yeah. Now it's a Nolik's Cube, right? 